So here um, I want to test to make sure that the uh, the three servos uh, for the Bobot that I purchased um, actually work correctly. Um, in addition to that, I also want to find out where the zero point or where the wheels don't um, turn, the stop point, because uh, there's going to be a forward direction, a reverse direction, then you want to find the actual stop position. And you can either set a frequency uh, for the servo at 1500, which is kind of just the the standard, but it's not always not always correctly uh, the right point where your servos actually come to a complete stop. So I don't want any sort of creep. Or you can use degrees like 90 degrees between zero and 180 is 90, and 90 is supposed to be stop. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So I found a uh, program online that uh, will allow you to enter either an angle like 90 degrees or um, uh, uh, or, or like 1500 um, for the stopping point. So um, I want to figure that out now because I want to find out, uh, first of all, I want to test to make sure the, the servos all work. And uh, second, I want to make sure that I, I kind of find out what the uh, stopping point is before I start coding so that I know uh, what uh, position to enter. In addition to that, I'm going to show the uh, output from the digital pin that is going to control both wheels. I'm only showing uh, one wheel here, but there's actually a second wheel over here that also will move, and uh, the servo in front, which is going to be the ping servo. But uh, I'm just getting them all to move right now, and I want to actually see that frequency. So turn this on. I've already zeroed this out and got it all set up. Um, I show that in a different uh, video on how to adjust this and get the, the, the waveform uh, into view. So right now it's set at 90, which is stop. So uh, let's go ahead and hit reset here. And it's going to come up and say enter, enter an input. So I put in either uh, um, uh, an angle or uh, microseconds. And you'll see the frequency here will change. So let's say we do um, uh, 2000. I enter 2000, and you'll see that the frequency actually here changes, and both wheels are moving. Now they're they're moving in the same direction. So they're going one's going. They're both going a forward direction uh, as far as the servo is concerned. So all I want to see is that they move, and this should move too. So now if we do um, let's say 900, which is on the other side of 1500, because 1500 is theoretically stop. This moved, and you can maybe see the wheel on the other side also is moving. So that's good, it's going opposite direction. So let's do 2000, 2200. Oh, 2200. And then they reverse direction, which is great. Um, let's try 12 degrees, and you'll see it says microseconds here, but let's try degrees now. And you'll see that we now get an angle, and this moves, so it's on the, if 90 is stop, 12 is forward rotation, 120 should be reverse, and it does. And you see that uh, this actually moves to the 100, 120 position. Uh, we do 15, that'll move to angle 15, this will reverse direction. So that seems to be working. Now 90 should be our stopping position, and it's not. You can see here that it's actually still moving, so let's try 91. Let's try 89. 89. Oh, it's speeding up, so 89 is the wrong direction. Let's try 91. And that is almost completely stopped. It's still moving a little bit. You can probably see it in the video that it's moving just a little bit. Let's try 92. Okay, that is stop. This is at angle 92, but the wheels have actually stopped. Both of them have stopped, which is nice. So 90 is not stopped, but 92 is. Let's see what microseconds uh, is actually stopped. So let's try 14. Hundred. Well, that's definitely moving, and you can see we're still registering uh, here on the oscilloscope. 
the actual frequency changing, which is good. So 1400 doesn't stop. 1450 slows it down more. Uh, 1499. Uh, you can, it's pretty close to stop. That's pretty close. 1500 is stop also. 1505 starts to creep. 1495, that's stopped also. 1492, 1490, yeah, that's still pretty much stopped. 1480, well, now it's creeping again. So <clears throat> there's a larger window when you use microseconds versus just an angle. An angle you have to actually type in 92, whereas um, if you do microseconds, you don't have to. You have more room for uh, stopping. So let's see, 1495. You can still hear it buzzing a little bit, 1500. So that actually works pretty well. So I just wanted to kind of document this and show how uh, the oscilloscope changes so you can monitor and, and measure your output to see what's actually happening. And uh, I also wanted to test the servo, so that looks like that works great. So on to the next little test. Okay, so this is the code used to configure the servo wheels. Um, I downloaded it from the web. It's a straightforward little program. I could have written it myself, but um, I happened to stumble across this when I was researching servos. And so I just downloaded it and decided to use it. I think others can use it too. Um, it's by this guy, ZoomCat. I don't know what it is. Serial Servo Test. Uh, and it says right here, it uh, servo type position from 0 to 180 in serial monitor. It, uh, uh, it types the servo position. Or for, milli, uh, for milliseconds, you use a, a number like uh, 1,500 or 1,000 or 2,000. Um, the code determines whether you're using degrees like 90 or 180 or 0. Uh, I guess it's only for IDE 0022 and later. I don't know what that is referring to. I guess that's just the IDE for the Arduino. Uh, I use something older. Um, something to note here is you, powering a servo from the Arduino does not work. It will kind of work, but you don't want to do it. You can really damage uh, the Arduino. You can burn it up. Uh, you, you may d damage the servo. The little micro blue servos, you probably could run one, but the larger servos, uh, like the ones I'm showing, they require at least five to six volts and at least an amp a piece. So um, you need a lot of power. I actually wound up uh, doing a lot more research on, on servos here, and it um, uh, turns out you need quite a bit of voltage to make them work correctly. But that being said, I wanted to also um, mention um, um, I didn't add this uh, portion of the code uh, to the original Bobot uh, uh, MPU6050 video because that, that video was getting 40, 45 minutes long and I'm trying to reduce the length of my videos. Um, also, I noticed, uh, I want to note that the uh, the wheels were going the wrong direction. They were going in opposite directions. Uh, they need to be going in the same direction, obviously, for forward or reverse. Um, I corrected that in later code, so don't be concerned, con uh, concerned with the way the wheels were rotating. It's not really relevant for finding uh, uh, the direction control and an uh, absolute zero uh, of your servos. Lastly, I wanted to uh, note, I'm going to try to put the Arduino sketch name um, in the code and maybe notes at the top of the code up here. Uh, this is the sketch name. You can download it at CodeBender uh, website that's uh, listed. Um, and uh, you can just download it and then you should be able, it should run perfectly with your um, your servos that you're testing. So let's get on with this code really quick. Um, basically, uh, you include uh, 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 the servo um, uh, uh, 
uh, library here, you create an object, obviously, your serial uh, speed, um, baud rates, so you can write to uh, the serial port, um, serial monitor port. Uh, here we write the seconds, this should set it to, this should stop it, because um, we don't want the wheels moving, and then this is the pin that has the servo control, I changed mine. Uh, I had I have uh, different uh, uh, pins controlling um, the wheels, uh, so I think I actually added uh, an, an additional um, uh, pin here, maybe pin four or nine or something. So um, then we come down here, and here's the main loop. This is some sort of output he has. Uh, he's just I don't know. This is his code, not mine. Uh, we check to see if the serial is available, and we wait for input, and um, then we read uh, a byte, we concatenate it, we wait a few seconds. Um, if the string length is greater than zero, we uh, here we, it says so you can capture the string, um, convert it, convert the string to an integer, um, and then um, if that integer is greater than 500, because the uh, rotation of servos basically goes from 0 to 180, if it's greater than 500, then obviously you're trying to write something in microseconds. You print out uh, this message, you print out your value, and then you write to the servo in microseconds. Else, it must be less than 500. Uh, must be equal to, must be less than 500 so you're trying to do some sort of angle um, and so you write out angle and you do you print the angle and then you write that angle to the servo uh, you empty uh, the string and then you go back up here and read a whole new uh, either angle or microseconds to test I did both in the video. I did degrees from 0 to 180 because you can see that uh, if you're using angles you don't have as many um, dead spots or stop spots if that makes sense. Whereas if you do microseconds you actually have more um, uh, dead spot. It actually goes from 1482 to about 14 or 99 so you have a bigger buffer and so you have more options to make sure both wheels are actually stopped so uh, I just wanted to put this out there um, there's no wiring schematic for it or anything like that um, I this is just a calibrating for the servos and that's all I wanted to uh, to show you